been five years since you started a company mm. with Huiling, your Harvard Business School mm. classmate. Mm -hmm. What are the working dynamics between the two of you? What are your strengths and weaknesses that you try to leverage off each other? She is an amazing person, human being. Um, we share the same values. That's the most important thing, mm. right? In terms of being and solving real big complex problems for Southeast Asia. She's Southeast Asian. She loves what we do. She loves the company. Mm -hmm. uh, that, from a values perspective, we are completely aligned. Uh, and the second thing, you know, she's the ability that she also can relate uh, at a very deep level to the problems we're solving, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, if you remember the story I shared with you before about her feeling her safety was being threatened uh, in taxis before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she felt very real to that problem. And because of that, she's also the person who drives the product today. Mm -hmm. She always calls herself the plumber, right? Mm -hmm. The stuff that people don't want to do, she does. Mm -hmm. um, or, well, that I didn't want to do then, mm -hmm. uh, she does. And she was driving things like the talent, the people operations. Sure. Uh, she's very meticulous, mm -hmm. so she loves going into the details, into the numbers, uh, whereas I'm more, I'm more a street fighter. I love going to the <laughs> ground, I love talking to drivers. Yeah. You know, in that aspect, we're different, but from a values perspective, we're very similar. Okay, so you complement each other. Very much. As so. co-founders, how do you actually carry out decision making? Um, a lot of times, she decides on you know her scope how should we make sure the hiring methodology is done so that we get the world's best talent um, with with the head of people uh, you know she will also decide a lot on on things like you know how should um, the process of making sure that we get the product roadmap mm -hmm. out correctly mm -hmm. meanwhile for me you know she comes to me for overall guidance how do you what should the overall strategy be for the company mm -hmm. uh, and then I will sign off on it um, she would think about you know how what should the total country and the total group budget be for the whole year sure. uh, that comes to me mm -hmm. so from an overall you know we've always had this uh, concept one lion one mountain mm -hmm. so it's very complimentary do you always agree with each other are there disagreements oh, of course in any healthy relationship right it's like a marriage like what yeah, like give a me marriage. an example so I mean think about things like hey um, we should hire this person uh, and then you know mm -hmm. sometimes she says hey Anthony, I really don't agree because these are the cultural things that are being threatened sure. and I said you're right um, then over some debate and sometimes you know she says look in the end Anthony I will trust you because you know you are the CEO of the company and you have to make that call mm -hmm. right so it's very respectful but we do get into these healthy debates and in fact we mm -hmm. always encourage it in terms of leadership style how That's are right. you and Huiling different from each other and how do you lead the company um, we are similar uh, in many ways yeah. as I say we lead by principles mm -hmm. we lead by values mm -hmm. Uh, so we both believe in servant leadership. So we really believe in the idea of how we serve our people. Mm -hmm. um, very sort of different from the traditional uh, Chinese, you know, I'm your boss, I mm. do what they say. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, we don't call anybody bosses, we call people leaders. Uh, we don't call people employees, mm -hmm. we call them grabbers. Mm -hmm. It's nuanced, but it means very different because they are teammate, you know, fighting together in the trenches. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, how we're different is, you know, where she looks at she has this concept of, you know, where she needs to be, she can go very meticulous. Uh, I, for example, find it harder to go into the very details. So of you things. keep the broad vision in that's mind. That's right, that's mm. right. It's interesting because when you look at a company like Uber, it's one thing to start a very successful startup, but yeah. it's another thing altogether to really manage it successfully. That's How right. do you avoid this trap that Uber has gone into? How do you make sure it doesn't happen at Grab? I think I have very clear very very clear check and balances mm -hmm. right uh, we have a very active board um, we have you know audit committees we have compensation committees mm -hmm. um, we have you know a CEO again is another it's just a servant in the company mm -hmm. um, there must be check and balances mm -hmm. right I have a very active uh, co-founder who pushes back mm -hmm. we have active uh, debates right it's not Anthony says it so it's done mm -hmm. I think that's not the right way mm -hmm. it needs to be 
very active. Uh, and then the board, of course, comes in and, and builds all these check and balances structure mm. as well. That was Anthony Tan, Group CEO of Grab, based here in Singapore. Hope you've enjoyed the program. Do check us online for more exclusive insights at managingasia.cnbc.com. I'm Christine Tan. Thanks for watching. Still watching? Perfect. Click here to watch another great video from CNBC International. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.